I'm Dr. Linda Gromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. We're doing a series on gender-affirming vaginoplasty. And by the way, I've been not showing myself on camera for a while because I had a broken tooth right in the front of my mouth, and it just made me self-conscious. So I'm back with the bridge. In this series, now a five-part series, we've already covered penile inversion vaginoplasty. We talked about definitions and terminology, the embryology and anatomy that goes into this, and the one-stage penile inversion vaginoplasty procedure. Today, we're going to be looking at the two-part penile inversion vaginoplasty, and later we'll discuss something called the limited or zero-depth vaginoplasty, the peritoneal pull-through vaginoplasty, and finally, colovaginoplasty procedure. So that's a lot to cover. So let's go back. I'm going to just review. This is using Hillary Wilson's excellent illustrations. Here is what happens in the one-step penile inversion vaginoplasty. You can see that this is all color-coded. So take a good look at the colors. The first step of the procedure is going to be to make a midline incision in the scrotum and then to remove the testicles. When the testicles are removed, the penis is then disassembled. And by that, what's going to happen is that the green corpora cavernosa, the part of the penis that fills up with blood during an erection, is going to be removed. The neurovascular bundle, the nerves and blood vessels that go to the head of the penis or the glands penis are left intact, as you can see best on this side view. After that, you can see that the corpora cavernosa have been removed. The bulk of the penile tissue has been separated from the neurovascular bundle. The glands penis has been shaved down to create the new clitoris or neoclitoris. And you can see that tissue, notice this is drawn in teal, that tissue is added to the end of the penis to create more uh, length, or in this case, more depth for the vaginal vault or vaginal canal. That oval that we saw in the last slide is then brought down to make a U shape. An incision is made in the midline to expose the neoclitoris, the urethra, and then the neovagina. So that's kind of the basics of how this works. And you can see on the side view, you can see the bladder in the northern part of the slide. You can see the prostate gland wrapping itself around the urethra. It, it doesn't leave. The prostate gland stays there. And then you can see that there is an intact neoclitoris with its nerves and blood vessels intact and a vaginal opening. Okay, now some surgeons will perform vaginoplasty in two stages, three to four months apart. The second stage is called labiaplasty, and this is done as an outpatient or day surgery. The two-stage vaginoplasty will, will show the second stage focusing on creating thinner and better defined labia minora, also called the inner vaginal lips. It will also refine the clitoral hood to protect the clitoris. After the first stage of this procedure, the clitoris can protrude, and it can be quite uncomfortable to some women because, of course, the sensation is quite intense. The second stage allows the surgeon to perform any refinements that might be needed after the initial vaginoplasty is done. Now, many women don't go on to do a second stage because they are very satisfied with the initial results. I can't really show pictures of this, but if you look up the photo galleries from surgeons who do the two-stage vaginoplasty, you'll see some beautiful results. So look at the, the websites of Drs. Lay, Meltzer, and Esmond for good examples. There may be others, but I just don't know their names off the top of my head. By the way, I think it's important for you to know that if you look up labiaplasty, you may find a different plastic surgery procedure. There is something called a labiaplasty, which is also a plastic surgery procedure that's done to change the appearance of the labia in cis women, that is to say, to quote-unquote improve the appearance of the labia minora and majora. I put improve in quotes here because there's so much variation in the appearance of the labia, and it, it often is a matter of personal preference. Just as a reminder, 
external genitalia can vary widely in appearance. And I show you this panel from Jamie McCartney's a work of art called The Great Wall of Vagina, in which he assembled plaster casts of many women's vaginal openings in the perineal area just to show the variation that we see in woman to woman. The one thing that I would want to say is that how your vagina looks, or rather more, more properly, how the labia look or the vulva look is really a matter of your own personal preference. In my opinion, it shouldn't be somebody else who defines what the proper appearance of your labia would be. But that's my opinion. I hope this video is informational to you, and I hope that you'll find it helpful. If so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.